Unit 7, page 66. Watch the lecture. Part B. Listen for main ideas. I don't know about you, but I spent the entire weekend watching World Cup matches. In fact, my whole family did. We're big sports fans. And while some people think of sports as just a fun interest, social psychologists have a wider view. Many modern social psychologists say that watching sports and identifying with a particular player or team fulfills an important human need. This is the need to belong to a group and feel a sense of self-esteem. In other words, people may have a deeper social motivation for following sports. It's not just about watching a game. Today, we'll take a quick look at five broad reasons why people follow sports. And then we'll come back to this idea of belonging and self-esteem. OK? First off, people are motivated to watch sports because sports are really entertaining. Sports is performance art. We can observe superb athletes displaying their talent and dedication. For example, even if you don't particularly like sports, you can appreciate the gymnastic performance of an Olympic athlete, or an NBA player dunking a basketball, or a Wimbledon champion serving an ace, or a soccer player scissor-kicking a goal. The beauty of sports performances can be enchanting. The second motivation for following sports is our love of competition. Human beings are competitive. We love competition, a race, a contest. When we watch athletes playing competitive sports, we get a kind of indirect satisfaction. We feel as if we are also in the competition. Our blood pressure and hormone levels increase along with the athletes. The third motivation for following sports is our interest in drama. All human beings in all cultures love stories. Sports is a great source of storytelling because sports involve personal histories and struggles, relationships and rivalries. We want to see how these individuals succeed and how they respond to challenges. We also want to know about their lives outside the lines, their real lives when they're not performing. Now, there is a fourth motivation for watching sports. This is our desire to understand strategy. Games are interesting only if they involve some kind of problem-solving and decision-making. When we watch a sports event, like a soccer match at the World Cup, or even a chess match, we want to analyse the strategy of the players. We want to learn. What tactics do the players use? How do they try to get an advantage over their opponents? And the fifth thing that motivates people to become sports fans is the attraction of being part of a community. People become sports fans because that experience bonds them with others. Being a fan allows individuals to feel like they're part of a group. They can experience a sense of belonging and acceptance. We definitely witness this at a national level, don't we? For example, at the Olympics, being a sports fan is a way for people to feel united as a nation. Fans feel a sense of triumph and glory simply when their national team competes. They love wearing the same colours, chanting and cheering with their group. It feels good. And fans can feel that they are involved whether they are at the stadium or just watching at home. What's going on here? We can explain this with social identity theory, which was originated some 40 years ago by two British psychologists, Henry Teifel and John Turner. Social identity theory states that people behave in ways that increase their self-esteem. Self-esteem is a term in psychology that relates to mental health. We need self-esteem to be healthy. This includes self-respect, pride and self-confidence. And being a sports fan is one way that people can boost their self-esteem by associating or affiliating with a team, by wearing team colours or by going to games and tracking wins and losses, fans feel that they are an integral part of something. They feel they're an important part of the team, part of a community. The team and the team community actually becomes an important part of the fans' self-identity. 
So when the team wins, it feels like a personal success. And yes, when the team loses, it feels like a personal failure. But even when our team loses, we can still feel self-esteem because we remain loyal, dedicated members of our group. And like all fans everywhere, we keep hoping for future success. Are you with me so far? Well, here's an interesting aspect of fan affiliation. It has to do with how social media reinforces social identity theory. Fans tend to use social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and so on, as a way of broadcasting and reinforcing their sense of belonging to a group. With social media, fans stay connected and share their commitment to the team, and it works both ways. Teams and players also post regularly on social media. This ongoing exchange keeps fans involved in the team community. So, to summarize, we've looked at five types of motivation for people to become sports fans. Entertainment, competition, drama, strategy and community. We all have a human drive to be part of a group and to feel good about ourselves. And being a sports fan is one way to do that. In the next class, we'll look at other kinds of social groups and how social identity theory operates in them. Okay, team, that's all for today.